for those who are keeping count, that should have been 119 rings of the bell, one for each year that we've been in existence. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O gracious God, we give you thanks for the beauty of this day, for the wonder of your love, and for the opportunity to gather together to celebrate. Give us grateful hearts now, O Lord, as we gather. Bless us, and bless in particular the class of 2019 as it goes forth from Christ School. All this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And now for the introduction to the senior speaker for today. I met Will DeBose during the summer of 2015 when he was an eighth grader relocating from Asheville, uh, to Asheville from Atlanta. He sat on my office couch and we had a spirited conversation and interview. It was evident that he was bright, eager, and intellectually curious, and I engaged him on that level. I envisioned him, I envisioned him a perfect fit for Christ School, and when I asked him what other schools he was considering, he said Carolina Day and Owen High School. Well, that set my competitive juices in motion. No way was I going to let this young man miss this experience. I remembered in our conversation that he mentioned his love of history, and we started talking about the book Unbroken, a true story of an ordinary man who lived an extraordinary life during World War II as a prisoner of war and beyond. The connection was made. I could see it in his eyes. That's when I went for the jugular. I stood up, went over to my bookshelf, grabbed a copy of Unbroken, which was personally autographed by Louis Zamperini himself. I gave it to Will. Well, it worked. He took the bait, and he's going to graduate. Uh, Will, that was my only copy, so when this is over. Will's experience here has been nothing short of stellar. Member of the National Honor Society, AP Scholar with Honors, Headmaster's High Honor Roll every semester, winner of the Swanee Award for Excellence Junior Year, winner of the International Studies Award sophomore year, member of the outdoor program all four years, president of the debate club, member of the Christ School Quiz Bowl team that recently went to nationals in Chicago, and lastly, and perhaps most importantly, a proud member of the Little Greenies basketball team in 2015 and 16, during which he airballed a free throw. Will DeBose. Good morning. Good morning. Happy graduation day, everybody. This is uh, obviously a very big event, a lot of different emotions going around. One thing I think everybody graduating today is feeling is gratitude. I've discovered that for me, it's often hard to express gratitude to the people who help you through the struggles in your life while the struggles are going on. But now that the hardships are over, for a very, very brief moment, I know I can speak on behalf of the entire senior class when I say thank you. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to the faculty and staff for the knowledge and the inspiration. Thank you to the parents and the families for the support and the guidance. And thank you to the underclassmen for the friendships and ensuring there's never been a dull day at Christ School. Everyone in attendance today has helped someone who will walk across the stage in a few minutes. And that is worthy of some long overdue appreciation. So again, thank you. Earlier this year, I gave my senior speech to the school. In it, I advised the underclassmen. In it, I advised the underclassmen to use Christ School as an opportunity to discover who they really were. My point was, if they developed confidence in themselves here, they would be more prepared for the character challenges that are waiting for them out there. 
However, in the months since, as the thought of leaving everything I've ever known to become less of a theory and more of a reality, a troubling thought has occurred to me. It was simple to preach about confidence as a four-year high school senior. It's going to be another thing entirely to practice it as a first-year college student. You see, Christ School holds few mysteries to me. I have learned its rhythms and patterns, and I can fit into them seamlessly. For me and my fellow seniors, there is little to be unsure about when walking down the halls of Wetmore. Consequently, it was easy to lecture on finding yourself and not caring what people thought about it, but just how much of my confidence was rooted in the environment that nurtured it. How much of my identity was drawn from the familiarity of my surroundings. At the heart of these questions was the fear that when I finally left all these familiar faces, the person I'd come to be here would cease to exist. New experiences, new classes, new people. What if they required me to be a completely different person? Oddly, what settled me down was looking at some old pictures of myself. I am 18 years old. When I look back at a picture of myself when I was 16, I think, you freak. <laughs> Do you not know what hair product is? You, you, you look ridiculous. It's a bad look. And I'm grateful that I look so much, at least relatively, better now. <laughs> relatively. Yeah, it's that's, that's, that's good. Uh, and, and we've all been there. We've all had that moment where we look at an old picture and we're like, yikes. Uh, but the thing is, when I was 16, year old, 16 years old, and I look back at a picture of myself when I was 14, I would think the same thing. Why am I wearing M1 basketball shorts? That's not, that's not good. I'm glad I finally matured enough at 16 that I don't look like such a geek. And I would see this cycle had repeated itself my entire life. Then an even more troubling thought occurred to me. If the pattern holds, it is a logical certainty that I will look back at pictures of my graduation two years from now and think, why, oh why, do I have so much hair gel in my hair? <laughs> it's inevitable, almost inevitable. So when you look at a picture of yourself, the change is obvious. Your appearance has clearly altered since then. But the thing is, you still recognize who you are. You still look at yourself and think, yeah, Maybe I'm different, but that person in the picture, for better or worse, is undeniably me. This is because in every stage of life, you can see the enduring characteristics that stay with you. And I believe this holds true for more than just the physical parts of ourselves. In all likelihood, we will be very different people with a few years of college under our belts. Varied music tastes, new ideas about fashion, maybe, if we're lucky, even a college degree. But it's also true we are very different people now than the version that existed before high school. Whiny, impulsive, stubborn eighth graders have been replaced with high school seniors that are less whiny, impulsive, and <laughs> stubborn. But even though looking back at that kid 14 years ago makes me, four years ago makes me shudder with embarrassment, I know it's me. I still have the same sense of humor, it's just evolved. I'm still loud, I just know when to be loud. I still love to argue, I just argue about different things. These enduring characteristics allow us to see the similarities between the two renditions of ourselves, similarities that allow us to know that they are the same person. So yes, change will come. But while this change may shape us in ways we can't understand yet, it will not define us. It will not come to dominate the entirety of our being. Your family, your faith, your prior relationships, they've all had too strong and meaningful of an influence to be washed away as soon as your circumstances shift. So don't resist the change. You won't lose who you were. Trust that the values places like Christ School have brought out in you, loyalty, courage, compassion, will stay with you no matter what. Those enduring characteristics. And that's how I know when we come back for our reunion five 10, 15 years from now, we'll look back at our high school selves and think, yeah, he was a bit of a moron, but that guy, for better or worse, was unquestionably me. Thank you. Our commencement speaker this morning needs no introduction. 
Father Kirk Brown graduated from Davidson College in 1975 and then from the University of Virginia with a graduate degree in German language and literature. He first worked at Virginia Episcopal School for 12 years where he taught German, taught English, served as chair of the foreign language department, was the assistant dean of students, director of college counseling, varsity tennis coach, and winner of the Paul Fulton Teacher of the Year in 1983. In 1989, Father Brown received his Master's of Divinity degree from Virginia Theological Seminary and then served as rector of St. John's Episcopal Church in Roanoke. That all seems like a totally encompassing career to me, but Father Brown was just getting started. He arrived at Christ School in 1995 in what would, in what would be an illustrious and meaningful tenure as chaplain of Christ School. I don't know if I've served with a colleague that is so worldly, intelligent, and accomplished, and at the same time possesses no ego. Words are difficult to put together in attempting to describe what Father Brown means to this community. He is omnipresent and is involved in so many ways in the lives of students, faculty, parents, and alumni. Truly someone that spans every nook and cranny of this campus. He is patient, kind, enlightening, and can laugh with all of us. We need more people in the world like him. Lastly, if there was one singular word in the English language that sets Father Brown apart, it's the word trust. Those who know him understand what I'm referring to. In his hands, information, emotional or vulnerable, are safe and secure. I trust him. Students trust him. The faculty trusts him. So do all parents and alumni. I have underestimated the importance of the word trust during my lifetime until I worked alongside Father Brown. With no further ado, Father David Churchman Kirk Brown. The Lord be with you. An odd way to begin the remarks at commencement, or maybe you're thinking, the old chaplain knows no other way to start. But I want to suggest that these words may be the most appropriate way to begin such an event. First, they express my fervent hope that all of you here today, and most especially, those about to take your leave might take to heart that the Lord is with each one of us. And they remind me that you want that for me too. For you see, liturgy at its best is conversational. We are not in this alone. We have one another as companions in the way. So once again, the Lord be with you. Thank you. Now, what to say about this moment, this point in time so packed full of significance, but one just as likely to be lost in the string of moments that make up our lives? How do we plumb its depths, take stock of the now, so that in the frenzy that follows, we are not left wishing we had made more of it? First, I invite, I invite each of us and all of us to pause for a moment and quite literally take a deep breath. Now look around and take stock. This is a singular moment in time, a singular gathering. It's not often that we get to walk on, let alone gather on this sacred ground we call Yard A. To parents, grandparents, siblings, and friends who traveled here to celebrate someone in the class of 2019, relish this accomplishment that you have made possible. To alumni from generations past who returned to Christ School for this annual event, how does it feel to be back on this campus that holds so many memories for you? To current students standing here for perhaps the first time, or the second, or the third, or even the fourth. Your turn will soon come. 
Can you feel it? To my dear sisters and brothers on the faculty, on the staff, on the administration, who have worked so tirelessly this year to get students and one another to this point, do you feel a sense of accomplishment, satisfaction, maybe relief? And finally, to the members, fellow members of the class of 2019, who prepare to walk across this stage and then take leave of this school that has loved you, that has challenged you to be your best, supported you and done its part to bring you from boyhood to manhood. What is swirling in your heart? What cascade of thoughts and emotions fill you in this moment? You see, there is so much more happening than we might realize if all we are doing is shuffling or hurrying through life counting down days, hours, or minutes to graduation. And along with others who have made Christ School their life's work for decades, and who now join me in graduating to new chapters in life, I know I'm speaking for all of us when I say that I most assuredly, I most assuredly am taking stock of this moment, breathing it in, doing my level best to savor the final minutes at Christ School. So allow me to take my turn at relating just some of what I have learned in my 24 years at Christ School. I have stood at this podium each of those years, yet this is different. There is something at once ancient in this tradition and something dynamically new. You students, are exactly the same age you were when I arrived in 1995, or when Miss Morrison arrived in 1989, or when Mr. Harris arrived in 1990. But we have grown older. I know it comes as a surprise that we too were once younger, thank you, Will, but haven't we aged gracefully? However long or short this chapter, this sojourn here might be, the truth is we are all just passing through. That's true of school, and it's true of life. Do you really want to rush through that? I've learned that teaching is its most exciting when I'm learning. Indeed, I have never been more aware of learning than when I teach. What Christ School has given me is permission to keep on learning, and I am so thankful for that. I have learned that hospitality is a very dangerous virtue. We speak often here about the importance of making visitors and newcomers feel welcome. But how often do we think of the risk of extending hospitality? If I'm truly welcoming you, I'm welcoming all of you, including your ideas and beliefs. And if I'm truly welcoming your ideas and beliefs, I am risking changing my own. In an age that decries compromise as weakness or changing one's mind as flip-flopping, we would do well to consider how precious it is to extend and receive hospitality and maybe, just maybe, have permission to change our mind. I have learned that embedded in the American dream is the terrible myth of rugged individualism, that success comes to those who pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Nothing could be further from the truth. What Christ School has taught me is that important as learning individual responsibility is, and it is important, we still need one another. Not one of us here today has done it on our own. We have all benefited from those who have reached and extended a helping hand. And what is true for the individual is true for schools. The treasure of a liberal arts education is seeing that no single discipline has all the answers, nor are some courses in the curriculum more important than others. Here at Christ School, I have learned that as important as science or math or history might be, we need the writers, the poets, the philosophers, and the artists to help us make sense of the whole. And lest I forget to mention it, 
the very word religion at its core means binding together. It takes an entire academic village. I've learned that there's no shortcut to wisdom. We are bombarded as never before by data. But data, until sorted out, does not equal information. And information in and of itself does not equal knowledge. And knowledge is not the same as wisdom. Wisdom emerges only gradually out of understanding and experience. Wisdom cannot be rushed. Quite the contrary. We need to slow down to assimilate. That's the power of the rocking chairs around campus that allow us to observe in new ways and ponder the beauty of this corner of God's creation. That's the power of a long drawn out conversation, whatever the hour of day or night. That's the power of walking more slowly to class, even if it makes us late. That's the power of Sabbath. That's the power of the Angelus bell that daily stops us in our tracks. But what I've also learned at Christ School is the power of love. Our love for one another, God's love for us. Here I've experienced it. Students to students, teachers to students, teachers to teachers, and often at its most sublime, students to teachers. To be clear, the love I mean is the sacrificial love we heard Bishop Jose preach several days ago, love that is not a mere warm, fuzzy feeling, but love that is action. We might be tempted to believe that might makes right, or that power and privilege prevail, or that the world is descending somehow and inevitably into the abyss. But what I know is that love wins, and that God's love blurs the artificial walls we erect, boundaries of race, boundaries of class, boundaries of creed, boundaries of nationality, boundaries of political and social identity. So I guess when it comes right down to it, I must be a mystic who has learned that God calls us to seek common ground and purpose, that God calls us not to confinement to a silo with those who are most like us, but rather to connectedness to our fellow creatures. Among my favorite writers of the past century is Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, who strikes me as the very model of what it means to be truly educated. He was a philosopher, a naturalist, a geologist, a paleontologist, and a Jesuit priest. He wasn't any one of those things. He was all of them. And he wrote these words I believe to be true in my heart. Someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then for a second time in history, in the history of the world, humankind will have discovered fire. May it be so, and may God kindle in our hearts that fire. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, for the presentation of diplomas, if I could ask the first row to stand up. Victor Austin III.
Thomas James Bell. Marcus Neil Berger. Douglas Francis Xavier Bland. Christian Wolf Blanks. Mark Hagen Brooks. Gordon Stewart Brown. Hale Frere Caffrey. William James Clark. Kivan Ramesh Cobb. John Paul Hazelden Cooper. Nicholas Matthew D. William Carrer Dodenov. <laughs> Jacob Edward Dowler. William Manning DeBose. <laughs> Stephen Spencer Dyer.
Logan James Easler. Hunter Douglas Embler. William Hudson Ford III. Michael Wyatt Gilday. Macquarie Pennell Gortney. Zachary Allen Grella. Zachary Harrison Grindy. Tyler John Haldeman. Mark Bradley Halverson. Jack William Harrison. Evan James Hoyle. George Harden Janvier. Robert Andrew Hearn King the Third. Nicholas Weller Valerie Crimer.
Corey Denzel Lavender. Maxwell Lyman LaCroix. James Ryan Lilly. James Christian Lopez. Benjamin David Lowry. The first row may be seated. Second row, please rise. Hunter Gare McCumber. Owen Coles Manning. Thomas Francis May. Kevin Mason McCarthy. William Godwin McNichols. James Favreau Murphy. Sean Fox Murphy. William Ross Oakley. Drake Bryant Oliver. P. 
Pierce Drayton Parker. Theodore Chester Peterson. <laughs> Henry Albert Pritchard. Charles Henderson Redhead. Caden Armand Robinson. Richard Borden Sassnet the Fourth William Clay Shuttlecotty. Kobina Aseadu Selby. <laughs> Edgar Harris Sherman Reagan West Schuler. Thomas Clayton Smoots. Kevin Donnell Snyder. Gentile Sue Peyton Spencer Surface.
Hunter Zeke Tarvis. Otto Max Tom. Charles David Thompson III. Daryl Kojak Thompson II. Chad Lawrence Treadway. Cameron Alexander Von Strahle. Yiming Wong. Yi Jun Shu. Hansi Jong. How young Joe? Jason Eric Joe. And a round of applause for the class of 2019. Thank you and everybody be seated. Before we begin the great diaspora of the class of 2019, a few acknowledgements are in order. Many people have made today possible. Many fingerprints have helped shape the class of 2019. First, 
In front of me are many hundreds of moms, dads, grandparents, brothers, and sisters who have sacrificed, loved, and have been a large part of these young men's success. I would ask that the class of 2019 stand and give a round of applause for those here in attendance today who have been there for you in times of need, stress, and happiness. Next, across from you are the men and women who have taught, coached, and mentored you. This faculty knows you well, your strengths, your weaknesses, what makes you mad, what makes you laugh. They have been there for you and are very proud of you. Please give them uh, a round of applause to this community that has loved you so much. You may sit. To the class of 2019, it's always interesting how days like today come to pass. How many men young find their way here, so many paths, so many directions, and so many stories. Now you leave to seek new paths, new directions, and create new narratives. I have seen 18 classes graduate before you, but yours holds a special place with me. More than a dozen of you came to see me, some individually, some in groups in the last two weeks of school, simply to say thank you and tell me that this experience has changed the trajectory of your life. What 18-year-old does that? Perhaps best said by a member of the senior class who sent this text to his father late yesterday afternoon. I want to thank you for everything you all have sacrificed in sending me here. On June 4th, 2016, you made me reluctantly take a tour of Christ School, and it has changed my life. You have given me my best friends and memories for a lifetime. I know it was hard sending me here, but I cannot put into words how thankful I am for this opportunity. I love you, and thank you for the best three years of my life. It's the best decision you have ever made. Your class has so many accomplishments in the classroom, on the fields of friendly, of friendly strife, on stage, and in service to our greater community. But what I'll remember most about you is your unity, your genuine friendship towards each other, what good mentors you have been to the underclassmen, and for your, for your outright kindness towards this community. If Friday evening's testimonials in Pingree were any indication of your integrity, warmth, and devotion to this place, and to your classmates. You have lifted up Christ School and left it in indeed a better place. And for that, I thank you. You've learned many things at Christ School, but if there's only one, please take this. Part of your success here has been a sum of your failures. Part of your success here has been grasping at challenges, challenges when the outcome is in doubt. This is what gave you confidence. This is what has made you strong. This is what will guide you in times of trials and tribulations. Gentlemen, be wary of the comfortable life, for it will teach you nothing. It is those uncomfortable moments, those dilemmas, predicaments, and challenges that will make a man out of you. Treasure those times of unassuredness and mystery. It's now time, the time when you must leave us. As you drive down Christ School Road for a life beyond the Shell Station, remember, we will always be here with you and for you, we are ready. Come back. Please give. We await your return. <laughs> and lastly, as St. Paul wrote to the Philippians, finally, brothers, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any praise, think on these things, these things which you have both learned and received for the things that you have heard and seen in me do. And may the God of peace be always with you. To the class of 2019, good luck, Godspeed, and be glorious during your watch. I would ask everyone's forbearance with one final tradition that we have here at Christ School, 
and that is that the faculty uh, form a receiving line. Please allow the graduates, and graduates, if you would, please make your way over there first, and then let the celebrations continue beyond that. Let us pray. O eternal God, bless all schools, colleges, and universities, and especially Christ School, that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. And grant that those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And one last time, the school blessing. Life is short, and we do not know how much time we will have to gladden the hearts of those who travel this way with us. So be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. And may God, who is beyond our ability to fully understand, but who knows us and loves us and travels with us, bless us and keep us in peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day the days to come and always. Amen.